Thank you. I'm back now. Hold on. So if you're on Facebook, I'm just giving a little background on Bow Wow and his girlfriend Leslie Holden before we talk about domestic violence um, in a context. So I was muted on, hey Amy, I was muted on Facebook. So now, thank you. Can you hear me now? Okay, great. So, <laughs> so when we talk about domestic violence, we rarely talk about men being victims of domestic violence at the hands of their female partners, especially in heterosexual relationships. So Bao, as usual, became a running joke over the weekend because his girlfriend beat him up. But the thing is, when are we going to come to the reality that women can be aggressors too? So they are, there are a lot of women who are, a lot of women who are abusive to their partners. So it may not always be physical abuse. It could be mental abuse, like always putting him down, saying he's not man enough or different things like that. So as we know, there are different versions of abuse that can range from emotional, physical, and financial. And we're getting to that a little bit later. So again, to backtrack, because people on Facebook couldn't hear me, the story with Bow Wow and Leslie is that they basically got in a fight because he saw her talking to a guy on at the club. And what he really, he saw her talking to a guy at the club and he got upset about it. So there are two versions to their story. So her version of the story is that he was upset about it. So he put hands on her. Okay, so I know all of this is like, oh, uh-uh. So her version is he hit her on the head, locked her in the bedroom, took her phone, and then dragged her through the house. That's her version of the story. And that she, um, what else? And that he broke three of her ribs when they were fighting. Okay, that's her version. And then he put her out. So then... Hey, Mike. So then, um, Bow Wow's side of the story is that, yes, they did get in an argument about that because he felt very disrespected by her behavior at the club, but he just took her bags and put them by the door. And that's what he told them, um, told the police. And but she threw a lamp at him and scratched up his face. So we all saw the scratches. And that's not to say that he didn't do anything to her. But just looking from at the pictures, one would believe that she was the aggressor and not him. And when the police got there, they saw the lamp on the floor and they saw like the blood and skin and all that stuff up under her fingernails. And that's why I think it's so important that we realize that women... In any type of relationship, women can be just as abusive with, as men, especially when they become possessive or anything of that sort. So when you look at the picture, no matter who the aggressor is, the conversation just goes back to domestic violence awareness and how it can happen. So for those of you on Facebook, I'm about to share my screen so that you can see um, the power and control will. If you're on Instagram, just try to follow along and you can Google later if you would like to. So let me share my screen really quickly. Okay, I can't see you on Facebook, but you can see me. So this is the power and control wheel. So for those of you who don't know what the power and control wheel is, what it does is it shows us how abuse can come in different forms. So on the wheel, we have physical and sexual violence. So one of the main things is intimidation. So that's basically making your partner afraid of you or saying things like, um, if you leave, I'm going to kill your pet. Or sitting around with your gun out 
to make them afraid and different things like that. Not you in particular. Then we all know what emotional abuse is. That's calling somebody names, putting them down, saying different things like, if you leave me, who's going to want you? So you basically break those people down to the point where it's like, um, if I leave, nobody, if they leave, nobody else will want them. Okay, then we have isolation. So if we go back to the story of Bow Wow and Leslie and him locking her in the room, that could be an example of isolation. So he locked her in the room and took her phone from her account, right? So when we talk about isolation, that could be isolating people from their friends, isolating people from their families, taking their phones and different things of that sort. So they can't reach out to other people and talk to them about what's going on. Then we have minimizing, blaming, and denying. So that could be just saying that the abuse didn't happen or telling the person, you know, well, if you wouldn't have did this, I wouldn't have hit you. Or if you wouldn't have did this, I wouldn't have took all your money and different things of that sort. So minimizing the situation like, oh, that was just a love tab. I didn't really hit you or different things of that sort. So it's when the abuser doesn't make a big deal out of the abuse. So if somebody is married or they just have children together, married, unmarried, um, using the children against people is a form of abuse as well, saying things like, well, I'm going to hurt, not me, but saying things like they'll hurt the children if that person tries to leave them. And that's one of the number one things. Or just threatening to take children away or threatening that you won't ever see your children again if you leave me or if I leave you. So economic abuse is preventing somebody from getting a job. So telling them that they can't work, then... Having all the power and control over the money. So I give you money for just grocery and household items. You can't spend money on anything else. And that's all the money that you have. So restricting them. So that's another form of isolation. Not allowing them to work and then controlling the money and how much they spend. And on this will, it talks about male privilege because this will is based off of heterosexual relationships. So basically treating a woman less than because she is a woman. But there are a lot of different versions of the power and control will. There is one for the LGBTQ community and one of the forms on, one of the forms of abuse on that um, will is, is outing your partner to the community or anything like that to the point that it would hurt them. Um, there's also a teen version of the power and control will. We definitely need to do a better job with talking to young adults as well as teenagers about uh, what abuse looks like in their relationships as well. All right, so... Hello again, Facebook. You can see my beautiful face like the people on Instagram. So the thing with abuse is that we just need to have better conversations about domestic violence in marriages um, and domestic relationships, period. And it's important for us all to be conscious about how we are treating our partners. So even if we feel that our partner has disrespected us, that doesn't give us a right the right to put our hands on them in any shape or form or to abuse them in any way that would make them feel less than. So as we go into Valentine's Day, I just want you all to remember that if somebody loves you, they wouldn't put you down in any way. They wouldn't abuse you. They would use their words to talk to you about any type of problem that they have. So when we go back to the story about Bow Wow and Leslie, we don't know who to believe. We see one person is beat up. And at the same time, society tells us 
to always believe the woman because women can't be aggressors. But the reality is that women can be aggressors. And in this case, we'll never know the truth. The only people that know the truth are the people in the, were the people who were in the room. So it's very important for us in our own lives to learn how to use our words to communicate with our partners. If your family has a history of domestic violence and abuse, like if you were a witness to abuse as a child or anything of that sort, I highly recommend that you get therapy to work through that because sometimes when we see things as children, we emulate those in our adult lives and our relationships because we think that these are the correct ways to love and show affection and not even affection but to say that um I own you and in a relationship you don't own anybody nobody is property so I can see how that turned into an argument so who is this guy that you're talking to at the club with me but it should have just been a conversation neither one of them should have put their hands on each other and that's another thing that we also need to realize that domestic violence can be mutual in a lot of relationships as we've seen already with the rihanna and chris brown situation it came out later that they were mutually abusive to each other in their relationship so it's very important that we think of domestic violence beyond the scope of just Hey, Felicia. It's important that we think of domestic violence beyond the scope of just women of just women being the victims because men can be the victims too. And the reality is that domestic violence happens in same-sex relationships. It happens in relationships with the elderly. It help, happens in relations in teenage relationships too. And when we when people like teenagers aren't emotionally equipped to handle things such as domestic violence, they don't know how to talk about it. They don't know how to express, well, my boyfriend is beating me up or my girlfriend is beating me up. My partner is beating me up and I don't know what to do because they may think, oh, he's just playing. That's how he shows he loves me and different things like that. So we as a society, we need to start having a more serious, in-depth conversation about domestic violence and basically what that can look like in any type of relationships. And we just need to be more conscious of the fact that it can be happen mutually. So both people in the relationship can be abusing each other. So that's all I have for you today on Prudish Pillow Talk. Thank you for joining me both here on Facebook Live and on Instagram Live. Um, Mike, thank you for your compliment on my perspective about femininity. Um, I hope my education is serving me well at Whitener. Um, and thank you to everybody who's tuned in on Facebook as well. I really appreciate it. Join me next week at 6.30, not 6 o'clock. Um, on next week, I had to move it up today so I can watch my best friend um, do her thing tonight on a webinar. So I hope you enjoy the rest of your week and your weekend. And what else? Oh, tomorrow on the Proof's Guide to Intimacy on YouTube, we're talking about the anatomy of the penis so tune in it's a very funny video um and if you didn't see last week's video on the makeup of the vulva make sure that you check out my youtube or my facebook page I'm not sure if i uploaded on facebook but it'll be uploaded by tonight so tomorrow youtube every wednesday lives okay so prudish pillow talk every wednesday at 6 30 Okay, and every Thursday at 12 o'clock, my videos are posted on YouTube and Facebook at 12, so you can watch them on your lunch break. So I will see you all next time. Enjoy the rest of your evening, and thanks for all the support. See ya! I'm still on here. Bye. <laughs>